Welcome to Centering and Strengthening. This is our, our class where we work on balance and power. Today, we're going to use a little bit of light weight. So it's not going to be a totally body weight day, although it usually is. But we'll start with uh, open legs. We're going to do two minute, one minute drills today. So it's going to be timed. Let's breathe it up three times. Take it up and down. Two more up and down, last time up and down, and we go side to side to activate the body. Now take that foot really behind the heel so you get that hip stretched out while you're getting blood flow to your body. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Reach up using the hips and the obliques, the shoulders, the serratus. Let's go. Hit your head over your tailbone. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two and one, step forward and punch your knee up. Two, three, on the eighth one, we'll go into a quad stretch, four, five, good. Six, seven, and eight, bring it behind. You wanna get your knee as close to the other knee as possible, pull that belly button to your spine. And if you need to hang on to something, that's okay. Breathe into it. And step back and do the other side, take it to the knee. Good, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and here we go on eight, slide it up, bring it behind, bring those legs together. You're doing a great job, and let's take it back to those wide legs. So this time I want the legs parallel to the front, and then we have them turned out. So we go heel to heel, stay low, Pushing back into your glute. Great, you got four more. Four and three, you're gonna do a lot of this today. And one, hold it here, pushing the glute back, take the arm out, rotate toward the knee, look up at your hand, get into that deep, deep stretch. Good, big inhale and exhale over to the other side, same modality, make sure your wrist is long. <clears throat> Come back to the center and dive through, reaching. You don't have to touch the floor. You want to just stretch your back out and then bring it to wide leg tabletop, heel and toe it in. Soften your knees, slide yourself up vertebrae by vertebrae, articulating each motion and lower those shoulder blades and over tailbone and we go side to side again. Make sure you put that foot behind that heel. While I have your attention, an email's just gone out. I have to make Pilates class at 8 a.m. on Sunday, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Reach up, reach. Sorry, I have to get you guys up here. You get up for Pilates. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. To the center, soften those knees. Roll the shoulders back. Roll them back. Roll them back and roll them back and then forward. One and two and three. Make sure your knees are soft. Take your hand across your head. The bottom of your ear, take your head over, drop that other shoulder. Make sure you're not going forward. You want that nice long scalene stretch. Inhale it up. Let's take it over to the other side, stretching across. Inhale it and exhale it up. Bring the arm behind and open the chest. Bring the hands together, open the back. All of this is going to be used today. Lower it down. Hands up low on the hips, take it up. Make sure those knees are soft. You're not gonna get enough stretch in here and you'll probably use your back in a way that doesn't benefit. Four more, four and three and two and one. Let's do those circles. Take it around for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Reverse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Breathe it up three times. Take it up. Really fill your breath up. And two, and three. Our first two-minute drill is going to be a lunge to the side. What that means is we're going to sit to the glute in the back. This leg goes along. This leg stays over the tailbone as you push back, starting right now. And the reason I'm doing it timed instead of <clears throat> counting is two reasons. One, it allows you to go at your own speed, so you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, so exhale up. And that doesn't make a whole lot of difference on something like this, but it might on some of our other movements that we're doing, where you're gonna have 
uh, more of a challenge because of your body structure, your legs or whatever. Uh, the other reason is I feel like I get to add a little bit more instruction as I uh, have the ability to talk more rather than count more. So what do I want to instruct here? Stay inside your hips for one. Push back with your glute for two. You inhale down and exhale up. You try not to push the knee forward at all, right? So you are going to do a nice clean squat to the side. So I'm gonna show you from the side, keep going. So if you need to see it, so your glute comes behind in the center, but you're pushing into that one side. It's like an isolated squat. So there's your one minute. Good, keep going. And then we do a 30 second pulse. Good, and those feet stay forward. Yeah, so exhale up. So one of the things you don't wanna do is start by hinging, right? You wanna sit back. So the chest comes down because you're sitting back, not because you're hinging at the hip. We're recruiting the hip, but it's not our prime mover, right? Our glute is. So you're pushing back, good. Nice, so two minutes isn't very much, but when we combine it with the stuff we're gonna do throughout the course of the workout, you'll start to feel some stuff. I don't think we're gonna go up to like 600 like we did last week. Was in this class, right? That we did 600? Yeah, I think so. Push up. Nice. You've got it. I love this feeling of really making something, you know, get tired because then it becomes uh, more than maintenance of the muscle. All right, here comes our pulse. Let's go. Down for 30. Push it through, nice. Now this is where a lot of people go to the side past their ankle. You wanna just keep going to the back. Nice, keep going, perfect, perfect. You got it, nice. You have 10 more seconds. So when we just do 20, that's one kind of feeling. When you're doing 30 seconds of this, that's a whole nother alligator, isn't it? Eyes ahead on the floor and bring it up. And then we're gonna start on the other side. But let's take a full breath first. I'm waiting for it to be on a nice minute. And here we go. Yes, same idea, push into the glute. Keep the knee protected by keeping it over the tailbone. Do you want, how, how wide do you want your legs? Well, you want them not super wide like plie, but maybe down from the shoulders or a little bit farther because you wanna be able to isolate Right? Good, keep going. Perfect, nice. Yes, push down, exhale up, down, exhale up. So this morning when Brewster and I went on our walk, what was it, eight o'clock? It was sunny and beautiful, weirdly windy. I mean, like Edgar Allan Poe windy or something, haunted house windy. But it was like all above us, so we didn't feel it very much and we come in and we're told like, oh, it's gonna rain in 20 minutes. It's impossible, impossible. It's not gonna rain in 20 minutes. It was blue and beautiful, like clockwork. <laughs> the rain started coming down. Good, keep going. Uh, you pass your minute, good. Don't forget you're exhaling up. So when you do that, you're gonna pull your belly button to the spine and drop your shoulder blades every time. So we're piling on these minutes, good. Nice, and again, this is kind of like the warm up. So we have different uh, movements and foci happening. Good, 30 seconds left till you go to your 30 second pulse, nice. And you wanna make this go back as far as you can. And again, I wanna remind you that it's not about bending the chest down at all. The chest rides with the push of the glute back, right? 15 more seconds, good. You've got this, beautiful. I haven't done time workouts for a while, so I'm happy to be doing these today. And we're coming into that 30 second pulse right here, pulse it. Now you can do a slow pulse or a fast pulse. One of the things I want you to be cognizant of is how the pulse affects your knee. Because for me, this is the hardest motion on my knee because it slides and slides. For a lot of people, it hurts their hip like that. So you've got to modify for yourself. Make sure that other leg is long, you're pushing back as much as you can, 10 more seconds. And nice. And three and two and one back to the center. We're going three to the side and up for one for two minutes. Let's go. Let me get on a, get me get on a big number. 
Let's go now. One, two, three. Exhale up. One, two, three. One. Okay, a lot of this is going to feel very repetitive. We are going to change what we're doing after the next set. But one of the things that we find out is high rep overload is one of the ways that we get the fibers tired and then they have to work through it. And then we reach new places in our, our um, strength, right? A lot of this is maintenance because we're not using heavy weights, but we are going for as much fatigue in the muscle as we can so that we can overcome where we are right now. And what does that mean? That means not that we're gonna bulk out. What that means is our body's gonna carry us with more strength and power. And the least you can do in your workout is make your body carry you, right? You don't want to be uh, weak in a way that you can't carry your own body. I've talked about this guy, John, who was in, uh, uh, boot camp and he was getting ready to get married this is a, about 20 years ago and he it was portly he had a he had a very large stomach one two three in accordance to what we consider you know the, the healthy size of a stomach but he was so good at jumping rope and lifting himself and landing that I thought this is an example of someone who has created enough strength that they can carry themselves. And so I felt like despite appearances to some people, to the uh, opposite, he was actually very fit to three. And it's important for us to know that so that when we make judgments about people, we know that we can't see a good example of this, someone's level of fitness. Here's our 30, or 30 seconds, let's go. Good, push into it. I can't tell you how many times, I think I've told stories about this before where people say, you're a fitness instructor, but that is really not happening as much as it used to. I think we've created a different kind of consciousness in this country around shaming and body positivity. Good, last five seconds, I'm feeling it now. So, and bring it up. Okay, we're going over to the other side, same thing, one, two, three, four, two minutes. Uh, Nice, so again, you can go at your own pace. If you don't like the threes, if it hurts your knees too much, do the threes. Feel free to stay with the singles. Nice, the reason we use the threes is we work on the fast twitch fibers that way a little bit. You know that we have slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers in our muscles, and we want to be able to address both of them to create a foundation of strong muscularity. You're 30 seconds in, good. I say that so I don't forget what time I started on. Two, three, and up. One, two, three, and up. One, two, three, you've got it. One, two, three, nice job. Keep going. We're approaching our minute. I'm starting to feel a little bit of alligator. I'm surprised my knee isn't screaming. It's doing a really good job today. We've passed that minute. Good, good job, yes, nice. You are so helpful and um, I wanna say positive in being here and bringing us all together in a live class so that we all feel like we have a little bit of community. That's uh, what we're, a lot of us are missing. We were talking about this the other day, missing the hanging out in the front and by the stairwell and talking to people we haven't seen. And that was a big way of fulfilling some social need as well as getting ourselves powerful and strong. Coming into the five more seconds till the pulse. Good, nice, perfect. And here it goes. 30 seconds. So this is the one, this is the significant, this pulse is the most significant part of this because we don't usually do a pulse this long. So let's keep it going. Good. Nice. Good, you are amazing. 
Nice job. We have five more seconds. And we come back to the center. Now, the next one is going to be split. It's going to be a minute, one, two, three, knee come up, and then a minute up down for one, up for three. So we're going to still do two minutes, but we're going to split the modality. So starting now for the first minute, one, two, three, lift up. One, two, three, and lift. One, two, three. Okay, so you got that. One of the things I want to tell you is that we move to the center. We don't move over to the other side. So that's one of the important instructional moments that I am able to provide. Because one of the things that a lot of people do is go over to the other side. And what that happens is that puts the weight on the ankle and the foot of the other leg. And you don't want that to happen. So you really want it to be in the middle. So calculating by taking your head to the ceiling. That's the idea. So ceiling, shoulder blades go down. Good. 20 more seconds like this. To the ceiling. Yes. Bring it up. One, two, three. Up. One, two, three. We reverse it. So it's down for one, up for three. Two, three. Down, up, two, three. Down, up, two, three. Now, one of the things, keep going, up, two, three. That might be hard to not feel over on the other side. So what you want to do is not swing your body as far. So go down and aim for above your hip. Down, right here, above your hip. So not next to the other leg. Good. We want to get this done correctly. Nice. Perfect. Keep going, you're halfway there, more than halfway. Nice, no pulse on this. I know you're sad about that, don't worry, it's coming. Nice, good, perfect. You've got this right in front of the other hip. So, and, and that's gonna give you a lot of balance work. And that's what we're here for, right? You have seven more seconds, I don't wanna lose it. Good, and last one. And then we're gonna to go to the other side. Remember, we start with, th with three down and up, and then start with one down, three up. Let's go. Right to the knee. Good. I know a lot of times in the past, we've done this to the center, and we have tried to do it without leaning on the other leg. But what we're trying to do now, we're gonna go into that center later, is trying to keep this whole body centered as you come up. Right, and don't forget to exhale up. You're halfway there. <sighs> nice. Good. Beautiful. Nice job. <sighs> Lift. So here's our strength and our balance working together. So this is a true centering and strengthening moment. Keep going. My knee is cracked a little bit. Keep going. Lift. You have. Seven more seconds. Good. Nice job. And now we start with the one up for three. So since I don't have to pulse, I can do that one. Yes, out. So again, you can do this at your own rhythm. The other thing that you might consider, if this is really hard on your hips or your legs, is bending that other knee a little bit. It doesn't give you quite the strength work that, does, that we need to help isolating that glute, but if that's what you need to make it work for you, then welcome. I really hope that most of us understand how we can endanger our specific bodies because not all bodies are endangered in the same way because of our different injuries or weaknesses or structural problems or just structure, just what we inherited. Nice. Good, do only have 10 seconds left. That one went fast. Good. Nice, one more. And last one. All right, now bring those legs hip width apart. It's gonna be a little wider. So on this one, <clears throat> we're going back into a lunge and bringing the knee up. Two seconds, or two minutes, starting now. 
So back and knee, back and knee, back and knee. Make sure that lunge is slow. I can't do very much on this because of my knee, but make sure that lunge is slow. So back and knee, back. See how your body stays in the center, knee, back and knee. Keep going, back and knee. You've got it, back and knee. So it's the push off is the exhale. So you inhale to the back, you exhale to the push off. That's what lunges do. And knee, back and knee, back and knee, back and knee. Keep going, 20 more seconds. Oh no, that's only one minute. We have to go another minute. I forget this was two minutes, even though I designed it. Good, nice, you've got this. Good, so in this one, your heart rate might go up a little bit because it's a little more active. So if you're taking a little faster, it might go up, but you um, have a little more movement. Now, one of the things that's important, okay, I forgot to mention this, is when you go back, you don't fall on that, you don't fall on that and give it too much weight. You stay down the middle, right? Wherever it was, I back and knee. All right, back and knee, back and knee. Back and knee. Okay, this is killing my knee. Back and knee. Keep going. Back and knee. 10 more. Back and knee. Oh, no, 10 more. 10 more seconds. Back and knee. You have four more seconds. Good. And let's go to the other side. Get your head over your tailbone. Take a nice deep breath. Same thing. We're coming into 12 o'clock. Number 12. Back. And knee, come on, low, back, and knee, back, and knee, back, and knee, back, and knee, nice, you've got it. So I'm holding up here at the top because I wanna experiment with balance as much as possible, especially when you're in motion because that orients your body toward balancing yourself when you are in motion. So we often fall walking up the stairs, or walking down the stairs or tripping on sidewalks. And so it's important to keep your body in motion while you try to balance. Of course, you know, if you can't stop it, what do you do? You turn around and make sure you fall on your glutes. I know it's gonna say, how in the moment can I actually do that? But for those of you who know, who have fallen, falling is slow, slower than you think. Good. Good, keep going. Nice. Good. Perfect. I had, I think I mentioned before, told the story of when I fell when I was 19 years old off a cliff in my hometown over a waterfall. It's actually if a water, it was a cliff I'd gone down a million times in my life. And um, it was about 75 feet. It was a long fall. But in that period of time, I had just learn hang gliding like three weeks before. And the first thing they tell you in hang gliding is how to fall. You know, you drop down and you, you bounce. You never drop with it and you never, you know, you just. So I was able to manipulate the, um, the fall so that I was able to land without, you know, falling on my back. But what happened was, well, what happened was I hit a cliff on the way down and jamming my mouth up. So that's where my injuries were. Okay, let's go back to the other side. So this one's gonna to be totally different. We're gonna go back, knee, side, knee, and back. Okay, so that's your modality starting now. Two minutes, knee, side, knee, back, knee, side. So we're taking you off your balance point. Good. Nice. So not counting also gives me an opportunity to tell you silly stories, I guess. <laughs> yes. And back, knee, side, knee, and back. Knee, side, knee, and back. So what we're gonna do at the end of this side, knee, is we're gonna go knee, side, knee, side, knee, side for a whole minute. So you gotta pull yourself up in this one right? And good. I'm not going as far back as you or as far as low as you because now that, you know, injured knee is 
is uh, fatigued to the point where I'm pretty sure I'll have all day damage if I don't take care of it. So you gotta make those adjudications for yourself. You're past one minute in. Nice. When you do things where you're modifying or you're aware that you're working pretty hard on a body part that needs attention. So you do little stops and breathe or you do modifications or you do smaller things or you support yourself with the other leg whatever, or hold onto something, whatever you need to do to make that happen. Good, good. And you've got this. You're almost there to the one minute windshield wiper or revolving door or whatever, swinging door, there it is. I have, I'm a person of, of language, I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> Back, me and here we go, one minute, right here. It's on the two, or it's on the one. All right, so you're holding yourself up, lifting up. You don't wanna be opening the instep. You're pulling your belly button to the spine. If you need to have your arms circled or your arms out, or your arms overhead, feel free, or if you need to hold on to something. Good, keep going, you've got this. You have, you're halfway there, so good. And if you need to touch down a little bit and come back up, that's, you know, that's what we do. But one of the things I hope that you'll do, if you start to feel yourself like leaning over too far, you pull yourself into the belly and you bring yourself back. Good, good. Nice, you're almost there. 12 more seconds. Good, there, I needed to touch down. Nice, and you've got it, bring it down. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Two minutes on the back, knee out, knee, all right? Back, knee out, knee back. Start on two, in case I forgot, you can tell me. Back, knee out. Knee, it's an analog clock. <laughs> knee, back, knee, out, knee, back, knee, out, knee, back, knee, out, knee. I was reading an article the other day speaking of clocks, and you probably can figure out how this is related, why we don't need cursive anymore. Because we have fingerprints and we can read eyes, so we actually don't need signatures anymore. And I got a handwritten letter from somebody yesterday that I could barely read. I mean, like my handwriting, he was, you know, fancy, but it was hard to read because letters did not look like what I'm used to seeing. And I stopped, students stopped handing in, you know, handwritten work a long time ago. And um, we're past the minute mark. So, I was kind of sad by it because I do see the reason for it, but cursive is so personal. That's one of the things I like about it, that it's so personal. That for instance, when I couldn't read River, River's letter, it made me have to kind of figure out what River was trying to tell me by, you know, it's almost like a puzzle. I know some people don't have time to do those puzzles, but it worked for me to make me feel closer to what he said. And, you know, uh, the other thing he did, the other way he personalized the letter was by making every paragraph a different color. And I thought of those pens I envied when I was a little girl where they clicked into, you know, different colors, red, green, and black or something like that. And other people had them and I didn't have them. And I was so jealous. All right, here we go for the minute. Let's go. Here we go. Again, hold yourself whatever way you need to for this minute. Here's our centering and our strengthening. We're getting strong and we're getting centered. Everything in motion, let's go. Good, nice. Pull your belly button, spine, get your head. This is really a moment of studying your own alignment, right? So do you feel too more forward on your foot or backward on your foot? Are you opening your instep too far because you're pushing down? So one of the things that we do is practice lifting up, feeling centered, not having one hip over to the side. Make sure that they're both aligned. Good. And I have my foot pointed. It doesn't matter. Just don't have it flexed, right? And don't let your, a lot of impulses to take the arms the other way. Don't take the arms the other way. You can put them in position. We're coming up to the two. Nice. Perfect. We got it. 
Yes. And last one and bring it down. Let's into a squat. Then invert and forward fold. Because you used a lot of the hamstring right here. In this inversion, I want you to walk back to your downward facing dog. Pull your knee forward and <laughs> the other heel back. And switch. All right. Let's get our mat and bring your medium weights down. We're going to do, um, what do they call them? They have some military name for the rows. We're going to do what we're going to do plank rows and um, plank. We're going to start with a two minute plank. So just bring your weights down. Now, if this is too much inversion for you, you can uh, do some balance work standing up and you can do your rows in a lunge position as long as your chest is on your thigh. So you want to uh, keep the form that uses the back as you row back with your um, weight. But I'll get to that after we do the planks. Two minute planks, you can pick any position that you want. We're gonna put our hands under our shoulders and push our legs out. Now you can go long hands, that's up to you. You can do um, a dolphin with your hands facing each other. You can pull your belly button to your spine or you can do supported with one knee down and then uh, switch at one minute. And I'll give you a one minute warning. And let's take them back and begin right now for two minutes. Pull your belly button to your spine. Make sure your arms are even. Breathe into it. Shoulder blades are down even in this position. So a lot of people let their arms wander up and you wanna make sure you're maintaining that plank position. Eyes are down. You go a little bit diagonal because somebody told me the other day that they couldn't hear me in this position. So I'm gonna make sure you can hear me a little better. I don't wanna turn my head too much because it's not good for me. Not good for anybody to turn your head while you're doing this. Gosh, you wanna feel that big push through your heels, right? Yeah. We're almost at one minute already, so congratulations. We love planks. <clears throat> There's your one minute. Hang on to it. Now, for those of you who are doing one leg, this is when you switch to the other leg. So a lot of people feel like they can get through a plank more if they move, you know, if they're you know, generating blood into the system, uh, oxygen into the system. So you can like cross over or come to sides. You can do whatever you want just to get through it. You only have 32 seconds left. Breathe into it. And the important thing is, is to get your body long, get it um, aligned, lift everything, even as you're lowered down into the plank. 15 more seconds. Last 10 seconds. Knees down, sit back into child pose. Nice. That was beautiful. Instead of going right into another inversion, we're going to come over onto our backs and we're going to do two minutes of crossovers. So come on over onto your back. Separate your glutes and your rib cage, belly button to the spine. I think crossovers just work so much. I throw them in a lot when I need transitions or when we're just working out the obliques. A couple of important moments. You wanna make sure you're above your shoulder blade or you're below your shoulder blades, that you don't drop to shoulder hands. Drop down and come on back up. I don't know why Siri's talking to me. <laughs> Drop down and bring it back up. You don't do that either. It all comes to the center. Take one leg out, the other one in. Starting now. We're just going to do a minute. 37, 17. Good. Nice. Keep going. You've got this. Side to side. Nice. So did you know, as long as my phone had talked, talk to me on this latest um, iteration of Siri, latest uh, um, update, you can change Siri's voice. 
So I experimented and that was a, supposed to be a South African woman who just had Siri's voice. I don't think it was. <laughs> okay, you're halfway there. Keep going. Good, you got it. Nice, perfect. We only have 20 seconds to go. Push it out, make it do something. Good. Nice, you've got it. 10 more seconds. Nice. Oh, there it is, and come on over. All right, again, I'll show you up here. If you can't do these rows, come on down and do them here, one minute on one side, one minute on the other, make sure you're inverted that much for everybody else. And then if you're doing the standing ones, you can go a little heavier on your feet. For everyone else, we're gonna go into a plank. This is only a minute workout. This is the one, one, this is one of the one minute workouts. So basically we're in our plank, we're high lifted, we're coming up and down, up and down. Now, one of the things that's important is keep going. If you can, time, 38, 39, 39, 05. Uh, if you can, don't let your weight go heavy on those hands. You'll feel the, you'll feel it sway under the bar of the bar or the dumbbell. And you want to make sure that your body doesn't start to hike up and that you keep your arms under your shoulders, because all of that starts to move. So up and up and up and up, keep going. Up and up and up and up. I can feel my hands trying to move forward. Good, keep going. Up and up, you got 20 more seconds. Up and up and up and up. Nice, perfect, you got it. Mm. How do you like it? Take the time. And we're done, we're done, we're done. All right, sit back into jail pose. Take a break. Nice, push those out of the way. We're gonna do another one on our backs before we go to the two minute plank again. Bring yourself all the way down. Take a nice deep breath. We're gonna do uh, oblique circles. So take the leg to tabletop, make sure you're all separated. Take the takes and take it all the way up. Small circles in one direction for 10. This won't be timed, it doesn't work that way. And then reverse. Breathe into it. Now reverse, making it bigger, the size of a LP, <laughs> 12 inches. Nice. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're your age. And then reverse. This way it would make sense to everybody. Feel your legs already, right? Legs are, my legs are having a hard time staying straight. And now the largest one you can have. I like to think of the exercise balls that we used to use, those Swiss balls that everybody had in their house but had no place to store them. <laughs> you might still have them. Well, tell me where you store them. And then reverse. That's what I keep going. That's what I keep thinking about these Santa Clauses, not the inflatable ones, but the plastic ones or the snowmen. Where do people put those? Where do they put those deer, those mesh deer? They have them in their bedroom, hanging around the bedroom. Good, you reversed, right? All right, let's go back to our plank because we're running out of time. I think that's gonna be the last thing we're able to do before we go to um, stretch. Sad that we didn't get more back, but we have done so much power lately that I'm not worried about us. We can do it tomorrow. All right, don't forget Sunday Pilates, 8 a.m., be there. All right, I'm waiting for a number. 41, 25, we're going to 43, 25. Let's just hold it right here. One of the things that some people do is they interweave their fingers. I don't encourage that because sometimes we squeeze the hands too hard when we're trying to breathe and it's nice, you know, it's, it's just not good for your hands or your wrists. 
for your forearms, your elbows, all that stuff is connected. Good. All right, watch your head. Make sure you don't turn it, lift it, or look under. A lot of people look under. They want to kind of look at their feet. Check your plank. Make sure it's planky and not pikey. Good. Pull your belly button to spine. I'll tell you when it's one minute in case you're doing the modified. <clears throat> Okay, one minute, switch over. You can do this if you need to take a break. Put your feet down, come back, and come back up. Just giving me some options. Now, some people like the hands to be layered like this, in this position, but you would have to switch it halfway through to make sure your shoulders aren't um, uneven. <clears throat> You're 30 seconds away. Nineteen seconds away. Ten seconds away. Come on, you can do this. Breathe it. I'm breathing for you. 43, 23. Sit back into child pose. Really push through. I want the legs parallel for this one. Usually we're toes together, knees apart, but right now let's stay parallel. Sorry we didn't get more of those renegade rows. Maybe you're sorry, maybe you're not, but we really did good balance work today. Come on down to the side and bring your knees up. Make sure your arm is coming out of your shoulder and then bend it so that you have a nice big um, pillow. Extend your leg to the front. Nice. Then take your hand underneath and bring it up to above your head. You're gonna try to get it all the way down. Big inhale and exhale lower. Big inhale and exhale lower and big inhale and exhale lower. And this is, the reason I'm doing this side stretch is when you think about the directions we went in that opening act, that opening movement, this gets both of that, the hips and the glutes and the hamstring. All right, I want you to stretch the bottom leg out and then take this leg over, if you can, and bend it and pull it in as far as you can. Keep that other leg on its side with the knee facing forward. Don't let it, drop back, right? That's your anchor. So now you're getting a lot of hip. Nice. Then with your legs like this, you're moving onto your back and you have your ankle <coughs> on your thigh. We're gonna curl yourself up first, then bring the leg up second and do that nice deep squeeze. Nice. Then we bring it in. Use the other elbow to push the leg away so there's some resistance. Look through the diamond, don't, that triangle, don't look up or down. All right, and then lower the crossed leg over, lower the head, bring the leg up, rotate the ankle one direction, and then the other. Good, you're gonna take it down one more time in a flow. Big inhale and exhale lower, big inhale and exhale lower, big inhale and exhale lower, great job. And hold it right there, breathe into it. So, uh, soft point. I'm going to go over to the other side so I can do that side. You stay there. Unless you want to be facing the camera. <clears throat> Good. And now we we'll take it over to the other side. Scoot it up. All right, so your hips are stacked. Extend the front leg and then lead it up right here and bring it toward your head with a big inhale and exhale. Extend that other leg down, drop the foot over, and ah, that feels so good, and bring it into the, uh, into the hip. Get that nice big stretch. I love it when I'm just doing it and then all of a sudden it means something else. All right, we're rotating onto our backs. The leg is bent as across the uh, 
lower thigh. You curl yourself up first, bring your leg up second. Nice. Push with your elbow, look through the triangle, and then lift the other leg up, get more impact. So lift that leg off, lower your head. Big inhale and exhale, lower. Big inhale and exhale, lower. Big inhale and exhale, lower. Lower your leg and cross your ankles. Okay. Inhale, chin above chest. Exhale, with your ankles crossed, you bring yourself over to tabletop. I gotta swing around the other way. And then uncross those ankles. Inhale, bottom and chin up. We did some back. We didn't get enough. Exhale, curl up like a cap. Whose fault was that line? Bottom and chin up. Curl up like a cap. And then go to neutral and circle your hips. In one direction, free. And then reverse. Tuck your toes under. Come up into downward facing dog. Push your chest toward your thigh. One knee forward, the other heel back. And then switch. And both heels down. And then walk it in to your toes. Soften your arms. Soften your knees. Good. I want you to put your hands on your thighs and flatten your back out. And we'll do one more back stretch right here. Inhale to repair and exhale. Now curl yourself up. You're going to take yourself all the way up. Drop your shoulder blades. Take your feet apart. Washing machine. A lot of balance today, a lot of strength. This class goes by so fast, you can tell. I am not prepared for its quickness. Five, four, three, two, and one. Both sides come to the center, breathe up and down. Two more up and down. And last time, 